afternoon. I was sitting upstairs with colleagues who are involved in journalism. I suppose you'd called us old hacks at this stage. And we were just saying how inspiring it is to feel your energy and your idealism. Because people like me in my trade need people like you. When When I was your age and when I was growing up, getting ready for school or third level college in the morning, you'd turn on the news and someone else would have been killed. And you'd live with that awareness. Most of the killing was done at night. And that awareness would come into your day. You'd get on with your life because you weren't able to stop it. So you'd go to school, your parents would go to their jobs, and you'd live with that awareness that a few miles up the road, another innocent person was killed. And the video you're about to see now is going to put those troubles in context for you. It's going to give you a sense of how bad, how awful it was, and how helpless we felt during that time. There are two people interviewed during it, and they'll be on the stage later. They're what you'd call nowadays, you'd call them paramilitaries. One was from the nationalist or republican side, the other was from the unionist or loyalist side. So it's a short piece, about six minutes duration, and I hope it gives you some sense of the human cost of the troubles. Thank you. This is what the Troubles look like close up. These pictures are from 10 years ago. At the time, the British Army used to work alongside the police. On an August afternoon in Belfast, soldiers got trapped in between two rival factions. That afternoon, the soldiers managed to get out of North Belfast without serious injury. These scenes are from last year. They were filmed less than a kilometre from the site of that violence you've just watched. This time, it's the police, not the British Army, who are being attacked. And on this occasion, the attackers are loyalists. things happened during the conflict in Northern Ireland. Over 3,000 people were killed. The dispute was between Unionists who wanted to remain part of the United Kingdom and Nationalists whose wish was to be part of a United Ireland. Often Nationalists felt excluded or discriminated against as the minority in the Northern Ireland state. What's known as Bloody Sunday took place in Derry in January 1972. On the afternoon of a civil rights march, British soldiers shot dead 14 innocent civilians. Father Edward Daly was the priest who tried but failed to save the life of a wounded 17-year-old. We heard the of the bullets gone past us. Get a load over here and carry them. Pass them over. The Enniskillen bombing in November 1987 was another horrific day. It was Remembrance Sunday, and local people were gathering to commemorate British military war day. An IRA bomb exploded and killed 11 people, 10 civilians and a policeman. Gordon Wilson held the hand of his daughter, Mary, as she lay dying in the rubble. Mary, are you all right? Yes. She screamed again. And the fourth time I put the question to her, she said, Dad, I love you very much. Never forget that the longest day I live. Those were the last words she spoke. 
When anger is in full flow, it's so hard to stop it. One bad deed provokes another. John Hume it was who said, it's time to spill our sweat together, not our blood. Slowly, despite many setbacks, with help from the British, Irish and US administrations, Northern Ireland's factions began to search for a solution through dialogue. It's not a perfect peace. 16 years after the political breakthrough known as the Good Friday Agreement, Northern Ireland is still trying to emerge from its past. It is difficult, but the search goes on, driven by the memory of how bad it was. Belfast, Northern Ireland has come a long way because we've sat down and talked to each other and listened to each other and tried to understand each other. But that has to be the way. There'll be moments of anger, frustration, uh, disappointment, disillusionment. But the only way to get through to where we want to be is by sitting down together. We can all make demands in relation to what we want or what's important to us. But you have to understand what your political opponents need and require for them to come to a settlement as well. And I think we all need to, you know, if you include all those inclusivity, uh, dialogue, understanding, empathy, I think it'll help us all come to... Uh, to reach uh, agreement on issues which are still outstanding from the Good Friday Agreement and are still toxic to a certain extent and poison the atmosphere uh, in relation to the political situation here. Seven years ago, Croke Park was used to host an international rugby match between England and Ireland. 87 years before, during the War of Independence, British soldiers and the police shot dead 13 spectators and a football player. You can imagine the complex emotions involved when the British national anthem was heard in a place associated with Ireland's war dead. This afternoon, you will visit Croke Park. Three years ago, during what was the first state visit to Ireland by a reigning British monarch, Queen Elizabeth, accompanied by President McAleese, attended a concert in this very convention centre. The Queen was visibly moved by the reception. Ireland's north and south and its nearest neighbour are on a journey. And this weekend, you are part of it.